Hi, my name is Gal Lawrence and thanks for tuning into my podcast today. If you're enjoying these conversations and you want to check out more of this transformational work, be sure to come back to guylawrence.com.au and join me as we go further down the rabbit hole. Enjoy the show. Right now. I know, it's incredible, isn't it? And uh, this is my second podcast. Thanks for coming on after coming out to talk about these things. But obviously, I'm just checking Facebook Live. I'm not very good at doing two things at once, but it is working. So <laughs> the male brain is a wonderful thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm back into the podcast. But it's the second one we streamed live via Facebook, and we had such a great response the other week. I want to do it again and bring these conversations uh, to people and hopefully help inspire and empower them in some way because we're all in this together. We're all certainly going through a lot together. And uh, who better than a man to talk about these things than Marcus Pierce, so oh. awesome legend. Look, I know I'm a raging optimist and it drives some people nuts, but uh, this is a time for optimism if ever there was. So I think it's important and you and I love to have these conversations often when we're not recording. And I think uh, when you called me the other day and said, let's record one of our conversations and um, you know talk about just how important it is to be empowered right now. I mean, gee whiz, this is not a time for disempowered and running scared and running away. This is a time to really get on top of self and, and, uh, and, and living harmoniously with others. Totally, totally. Well, how, how have you been since it all started to change? Like what's been the general mood in the household and, and where you're at? And well, I think like many people around the world, we've got that extra hat. So we've got four kids for people that um, don't know me. So we've got eight months, four, three and a half, seven and ten. So, <laughs> so there's just the, um, and we'll talk about this today, how, you know, one of the circuit breakers given this environment is actually just going to have lunch with five other human beings. There's a great change of pace in the, in the busyness of the work life. But obviously you and I do a lot, a lot so much in the digital world, uh, but then a lot of our work is also in, in live events, which aren't happening. Mm. So, you know, professionally, there's been some major readjustments, doing more of this, which I'm loving. I just am so grateful for social media at times like this, even though you and I uh, live just down the road from each other. Being able to do this with people all around the world is phenomenal. You've been telling me of some of your uh, meditations that you've been having with people from, you know, so dozens of countries around the planet is just, I know we could do it before Corona, but it just seems extra special to be able to do it at the moment. Um, no one's whinging and moaning about screen time and how antisocial it is and mm -hmm. how bad it is and the blue light. No one's talking about that right now. <laughs> Everyone's talking about how good is it that in the time of isolation we can all still be connected. No one cares about lighting anymore. No one cares that it looks more grey and blue on mine and nice and bright with you. Everyone's just happy to have a bit of um, life. So I think for us it's been... You know, very similar in, in other ways, in many ways, um, but then very different in terms of, like a lot of people, just having more more time together. There's no very little time of, um, you know, Sarah ducking down to the cafe for a couple of hours. I'm missing, I'm definitely missing not being able to just sit at a cafe cool. and just That's talking to people that you know and even randoms and just mm -hmm. idle chit-chat. Like I'm, I'm missing that, but... I, I recognise that that's not. So you can probably hear the kids having a fight right now. There's <laughs> way more going. of that in the in the school hours. It's one o five. Normally they'd be running about the the you know the playground, <laughs> but now it all happens here. How, how's your how's your mindfulness been with four kids in the house all day? Man? Well, see, whenever I whinge about uh, children, I always have friends that either don't have children or can't have children. They go, Marcus, we'd love your problems right now. Yeah. And it's like when I tell people about living up in Byron and I, if I ever talk about the potholes in the roads, people are like, ooh, the potholes in the roads. What are your makers? So I just don't even go there. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> it, it's funny how we just get used to things and no matter how good we get it, it becomes normal. And yeah. then we complain about the good things that we actually have in our lives. We'll be complaining. Don't you worry. When, when Corona's gone and we can all get out of the house again, you start people, people start whinging about the peak hour traffic and how busy the cafes are. And I couldn't get a ticket to this concert because now everyone's getting out of the house. You know, as Taylor Swift would say, the haters are going to hate, the complainers are going to complain. That's just human nature, isn't it? It is, mate. It is. Yeah, no, it's incredible. I, I, Touching on a few things you said for myself as well, you know, like half of my business has disappeared overnight, really, of in terms of what we were doing with the events and retreats and yeah. being able to adjust. But there, there is 
in in a strange old way there's there's elements that i'm reconnecting to that i kind of lost it's, mm -hmm. it's given me permission to to let go to a little bit of a degree I, I appreciate i'm not in certain positions that other people are financially and might be in, in that area but obviously it's affecting us all in in many ways but in some respects i feel like i've slowed down well yeah well just in the times that i've seen you as well what i've been i just love about you is emotionally mentally you seem to have adjusted and adapted really quickly so i think people that are in your tribe i think is really important to uh not only stay connected to, to you right now but even to rely on you because it's not many people that at the moment that i'm seeing are adapting in the gracefulness that you are and then on a mm. professional level i have been inspired by how quickly you've adapted the popularity you. of your digital space but the fact that um you've been quick to be able to just be putting out so much free content free classes free meditations um you know at a time like this in society right now where people need it more than ever um it, it's you know, needed right and I, I always liken it to the the gym like i've always looked back upon like we've all had hardships in our lives and and you know we're all certainly going through different hardships now at different uh degrees and levels but i've always been able to look upon my own hardships and difficult situations in time and actually draw some beauty from that mm -hmm. even though it might have taken me years to to really see the wisdom in those hardships it's like almost like um and the work i teach and the work we do is it it's almost like keeping yourself fit but you're keeping yourself mentally emotionally fit mm -hmm. but then quite a, not often we have to go and run a race or a marathon or shit gets real and we have to actually use that fitness well someone at the market it's said, now yeah well someone at the farmer's market this morning said said marcus can you give me something positive and i was like can you give me some positivity and i was like well look my first response was and i know this is not factually correct and i said look we're not all dying and let's be clear folks like there are people dying but this is i said we're not in a war we don't have the fatality rates of world wars this is not something where people are losing their young children, their teenage and their and their and their children in the prime of their life, their twenties and their thirties who have gone off to other countries never to return. And a, a whole generation and family lives are changed forever. Let's just be really clear about what's happening at the moment mm. in this world. And this is nothing. This is nothing compared to what many people, our parents and grandparents have gone through. Yes, financially and economically and those things, but honestly like it's nothing compared to i'm just looking at my bookshelf here and you know looking at stories of world wars and if you're living in australia right now and you can go on a job seeker payment and you can go on all these things gee whiz, what a country to live in going through a time like this imagine being in other developing nations at a time like this and just i Holy. just think what a country to live in uh regardless of your political affiliations and what you think about all the rest of it you know i'm just so grateful that we live here at a time like this and this is as i said i know there are people dying but on a grand scale of things if we looked at the annual deaths from diabetes and cancer and all these other things like i do think you know we need to get a grip yeah yeah i hear you mate i hear you a book that sprung to mind is man's search for meaning the victor oh. i bet you got it there right right here baby right yeah. here i'll pardon the lighting but anyone get on that book that it's, it's it's a couple of nights it's not a not a you'll read that two or three nights whilst we're on books now nah, actually I'll, I'll save it because i know we're going to talk about this a little bit later okay it's, it's dangerous it's dangerous doing these interviews so close to my bookshelf <laughs> <laughs> well look with everything with that in said and covered we we decided we want to talk about seven points today and we're sort of media and mindfulness and with your background as well I, I was fascinated to hear your your end of things because obviously in the conversations we've been catching up as well with your media background you kind of got an inside scoop of how it all works and as consumers that might just switch on the tv every day or watch the news or, or keep turning into these things we, we actually forget there's a there's a full operational system the other end that has hierarchies and agendas and it's all coming down to channel into news that's coming out so with that in mind let's get on to um should we go into the first point I think so. I think let's talk about the news. Yeah, let's talk about the awareness or being aware. Step one is being aware of the way the media works. And, and as you said, I did spend the first seven years of my professional life in TV and radio at Channel 9 and a sports radio station called SEN in Melbourne and a few other 
uh, larger networks. But I think the key to remember here from a media perspective is that good news doesn't sell. Uh, you know, the cat being saved from up at up a the, up a tree. That's always the very last story in the news. The news that sells, the news that gets to us mentally, emotionally, is the bad news. Is the fear. It doesn't sell to say it's a sunny day go out for a picnic, go catch a wave. Like People will just read the headline and, and go and do it. They're not going to buy the paper. They're not going to turn on the news. So right now, and again, I'm not, I'm not downplaying the coronavirus story, but from a journalist perspective, it is, it is media fodder. It is great that we can give you an update on the fatalities every day, an update on the new cases, an update on the recoveries, an update on how many countries have now got it, an update on the economic stimulus packs, an update on the lockdowns of every single country. This is a moving beast. It's a movable feast for many people. We just consume yeah, wow. it every day. And even though it might be the same type of food, it's more and there's changes and there's subtleties and there's there's cultural sh uh, shifts. How is Italy doing it? How is America doing it? How is Australia doing it? What's happening in, in China? It just never ends. And we become so consumed by that. It's no wonder there's a great... Um, there's a great speaker, Ralph DeBally. He wrote a book. I wrote many books, but you can TED Talk him, DeBally, D-O-B-E-L-L-I, talks about the effects of the news. His work was published in The Guardian. But the big takeaway for me is that consumption of, of the news dampens your spirit. And, Guy, you're far more qualified to talk about the body than I am, but news consumption increases your cortisol levels. As a result, it, it uh, decreases the ability of your immune function. It definitely decreases um, or, or has a deleterious effect on your mental health. We want to be really, really mindful of not just, one, be mindful of the way the media works, but then be mindful of how you consume it. And guys, probably good for you to come in here and talk about how the body responds to fear and almost why we're not wired to be pleasure-seeking and whilst we're far more wired to be um, aware of yeah. things that will bring us pain. You did stem a few more questions, but I'm going to refrain. You know, it, it's fascinating because I actually moved away from watching the news. And I'll never forget, right, I just decided it's just bring it to me now. I went to a, a, a similar to a Tony Robbins opening se seminar 15 years ago, maybe longer. Yeah. And there was a really wealthy guy presenting in that. And I said, um, and I went up to him after I said, and I had one question. You know, and I, and I said, if if there's one thing you could tell me that would help me to move forward in my own personal self-development, what would it be? And he looked at me and he smiled and he gave me a wink. He said, turn your TV around. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. And then yeah. walked off. And I had to contemplate that for a while. And I did. I physically turned my TV around when I got out here. Well, the news is like a drug for a lot of people. Like <laughs> gluten is like a drug. People People forget that gluten is like a drug. Sugar is like a drug. But the news is like a drug, and I see this when I talk about this in, I remember doing a talk for the NAB once, and it was oh, yeah. probably like 75 people in a department. I spoke about news consumption. One of the ladies, when I was talking about, you know, in the morning, maybe instead of checking the news, you know, um, read a book or, or journal or, or do something quiet. And she was like, but I need to know the news. And I said, but really, like, why? And she didn't have a great reason why, but it's like you're taking away the drug. Don't. It's like, give me back my smokes. Don't take this away. And a lot of people are uh, even thinking about it right now. It's like if you didn't know the news, particularly at this time around corona, how would you be? You might go, oh, but I'll miss out on the big government announcements. You know what? Within five minutes of an announcement, you'll yeah. have a family member, a friend or a neighbour sharing the information with you somehow. Or if you go onto Facebook or Twitter or whatever, you'll get it somehow. It, it's amazing how when you switch off from the news, you can still get a level of relative... Um, Information and then the other thing with the news is how many news stories that you have consumed can you genuinely remember, and, and that have had an empowered view on your life? Yeah, and I, I reckon absolutely. it's a bit that you many. Know, the, the body is actually um, the, the the body, the physiology of the body is conditioned for survival. Period. Right. If we do, if we do nothing, and we just allow the body to behave in a certain way, it is actually going to see things negatively five times to one. Wow right? Wow. As a survival mechanism. So we're all, always constantly on the scan unconsciously for the worst case scenario. Yes. So, right. So we're constantly going against the physiology. That's why, which we'll touch on later, gratitude practices and, and generating emotions of wholeness, love and, and gratitude, joy and well-being. We're actually creating a different chemical response within the body that the body can then adjust to, which can, can become the new normal. But because all these processes are 
acting underneath the hood, right? We create a homeostasis that the body is conditioned to. And homeostasis is about maintaining balance and keeping you safe. And if you're continually um, fixating on certain circumstances in the world that's creating an emotional response and an emotional feeling, there needs to be a chemical response that the body is continually going to. Hence why you can become addicted to watching the news every day. Hence mm -hmm. why you can become addicted to having to check social media 30 times a day to see if you're <laughs> feeling it. Hence why you have to get in on the gossip of your friends and your coworkers and everything mm -hmm. else because you're actually creating a response that becomes familiar within the body. And that is deemed as safe because it's familiar because it becomes a known. I love, I'm just saying Fleur Myers has said, I'm very happy living without the news. There are plenty of people keeping me updated. Thank you, Fleur. <laughs> that, that, that's exactly what I love to see, what we would love to see, that people are very happy living without the news. If we then ask people now, tell us about your news consumption, I don't think many people would because I think the challenge is that it becomes, in when you talk about it like this, it becomes a little bit embarrassing to admit that we do check so much. And I find out about you guys, I, I know if I'm tired at night, I will check a couple of things almost for completion, like completion for Madonna. Like, Man, yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> what, what, like, go to bed. But you realise, and we talk about this dopamine fix of, of screen time and it's like scrolling, 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 and it's like you have to cut the cord some way, somehow. And I think what you're talking about, Guy, with that, that we are conditioned for survival and it's all happening under the hood. It, it takes a fair chunk of effort. There's a bit of inertia in lifting up the hood and going, enough, enough. It's like quitting sugar, man. Mm. Everyone loves the idea of it. But when push comes to the <laughs> shelf three days in, uh, you got to uh, get your fix. Uh, 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 <laughs> it's no different. It, uh, it, as, yeah. far, as far as I see it, it, it is absolutely no different. So tell me, what are you doing um, for for information consumption at the moment in terms of what's going on with the coroner are you just checking once or you wait until your your neighbor tells you like well i reckon i can we segue my answer into your second point because i think this second yes. point of of how to reduce the noise it ties in very much to what we want to talk about next yeah powerful so point two being a powerful morning routine so i think not checking not checking this like the the it, Emails and social and news, I think, is is massive. So for me, my morning routine is to get up and go for a walk. My mantra in life is there's no place like out, which is really hard in this time of self-isolation. <laughs> but I love to get out and see the world. So I've got this. I've yeah. got my RunKeeper app and I go for a walk and I and I listen. I listen to you. I listen to Jay Shetty. I listen to anything I want. I, this morning I listened to Chris Martin from Coldplay doing a Facebook Live, just playing. I saw that. It was I loved amazing. It. I loved that he was I nervous do. and I loved that he was making mistakes and he's like, oh, my gosh, I'm making mistakes. It's harder on Facebook Live than a stadium of 100,000 people. I can't believe you people. saw that. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> and I was like, I'm just going to listen to this today. Um, but I think that morning routine, and I know you'll, you'll talk about this as well, but you've got to keep yourself sacred in the morning routine. And a big part of that is avoiding and, and and locking yourself out from the ex external world yeah yeah you gotta you gotta you gotta own yourself first I, I think you've got to own yourself mentally physically and emotionally get yourself to a place where you're you're in you're in control of that because there's so much outside of ourselves we're, we're not in control but if we can mm. actually go inward to a degree have a routine that sets us up before we turn on the phone before we do everything that like you're saying consuming the news and because there's the saying if you don't fill up your cup first you're never going to be able to be there to support and fill yeah. others and a morning routine is something i've embodied now for god years 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 and years and uh and without it i mean we get i don't know if we want to get into the practices of what we do i, I think but. we should because i've got four kids at home so my no place like out is a really big thing for me but and but you've got the opposite end where you've got a quiet house when you wake up and I think for the people listening and watching we have the perfect sure. difference of scenario so yeah. why don't you share what yours is because I think a lot of people and and how you keep it sacred because I think that's that's so important yeah yeah so I, I'll normally get up at either 5 a.m. or 5 30 a.m. for me I'm, I'm I find that my productivity goes through the roof 
in the morning towards the mm. afternoon now we can have a conversation after this mate it's lights out <laughs> <laughs> so true i'm so glad you say that because a lot of entrepreneurs <laughs> don't like saying it because like the hustle is real but seriously the morning hours are 50 times more powerful than the arvo hours totally totally so i actually like right now i'm actually kneeling believe it or not i have this stool and um I don't know if you can see that on camera. See how it's like a oh, lean to? Yeah. Nice. Right? So what it does, it keeps me. So then I pop it up under my hips and I'm here and I'm upright. And for somebody that can't sit in Lotus, like I'm, I'm the worst yogi kind of <laughs> ever. My hips just crease me. So I got this beautiful, comfortable stool. So I'll literally get up in the morning, go to the toilet, come back, and I'll, I'll sit in the stool. I'll put these headphones on. I'm in my own universal bubble right there. Yeah. And what I will actually do is a body scan. I will check in how I'm emotionally starting to feel. Where are my thoughts going? I'll give you an example, right? I woke up when this all just kicked off, right? We, we had to can cancel Portugal retreat. I'm thinking, shit. Linda's going to be giving birth in three months. And, you know, all of a sudden, I'm going through the initial grieving process because that's the first thing I think everybody can agree I'm with. I'm so it. glad you said that. Yeah, this really grief, good. right? So all of a sudden, I'm grieving, and I'm, and I'm like, fuck, you know. And and I woke up in the morning. I'm this like, is not how my life is meant to go. This is not what I had <laughs> yeah. planned for my year. This is not on my goals list. <laughs> exactly. And my whole body was just full of anxiety anxiety i cannot tell you how much and i remember waking up just thinking oh my god like and of course when you when you feel a certain way you're going to start thinking equally to the way you feel and if you don't actually do anything with that and just assume that's your reality you're going to see the entire day through that lens and if not it's going to manifest in ways that it's going to continue to disempower you and all of a sudden you lost it hence why the morning routine so for me it was I was like, shit, this is game on. I've really got to work here. Like, what, why, why am I? So it, the first thing I did was remove the questions. Why is this? It, it, it just is. Just let You're it go. You're never going to get the answers. You're never going to get the answers. I could find yeah. a million reasons why it was going on. But then I would sit in my stool, and then I would start to body scan. And I actually feel into the areas where I'm feeling the knots and the anxiety. And then I actually breathe into there. And now a really good tip for anyone, if they without trying to get too complicated you got fight or flight rest or repair let's keep it that simple, it that right? simple. yeah that's good that's good. Right? so if you want to get into rest and repair quicker because obviously i'm in fight or flight i'm already feeling anxious my nervous system's firing out you actually inhale out longer than you do on the inhale and that is proven to help bring your nervous system into rest or repair so for instance what i was doing i was breathing in for three and then out for five. And over time, and then I was feeling into the body, bringing my awareness to the body, and then just working with that. And then from that point, it allowed my body to actually settle down and I could feel the anxiety release me. Mm -hmm. And it was joyous. And then from there, I actually have a gratitude practice. So I actually start to count my blessings and look at and feel into and visualize all the things that I have in my life that, I'm so grateful for and then i'm actually producing a different chemical emotion that's completely on the other end of the spectrum to the 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 emotions of anxiety that i was feeling at that point so for coming from that place then what i've done is i've taken ownership of myself my emotions my feelings my thoughts i've taken control i've empowered myself in that moment and after 20 minutes i got up and all of a sudden, I'm in a very different state as if I hadn't interrupted that. And that allowed me then to lean into my day in a very different place, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so there's, I play around with many different things, which is probably more than what this conversation is about today. But for me, that was huge. I think the flexibility is key, though. I think that's like you just, that, that last point um, for me and hopefully for the listeners and the viewers as well is, is massive. Like when I'm, I'm hearing you talk about that, I'm, I'm thinking of my own morning routines over the years. There were times, particularly pre-kids, that it was like get up and meditate, then do some yoga, make a green smoothie, do my gratitude journal, yep. go for a walk, come back, uh, you know, have all of these different, you know, so many things. And then uh, the more kids I had, I had to keep on chunking things <laughs> off the list <laughs> because I've had times where it's been easy to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and then there are times like at, my, at the stage of life right now 
it's just a lot harder only because not not for me to get up but uh you've got kids waking up at random times and they need this and they want and i'm trying to protect sarah as much as i can because we've got spencer the eight month old and it's almost not irresponsible but it's just not fair if i just mm. if i got up and yeah. all the rest of it and i think like you said at the end is the flexibility there are certain times where when your baby's born you know, the day after your baby's born, it's going to be nigh on impossible to get up at five o'clock because you're probably already going to be awake at five o'clock. <laughs> you, but the thing is, what I'm saying is that it's the flexibility with a morning routine that is so key because as life unfolds and changes and, and through the different seasons and through different outcomes that you have, the, 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 the habits or the things that you include in your morning routine, I think, are, are so different as well mm. sometimes you do i know there's times where i just want to sit down and meditate others there's times i want to go and jump in the ocean others i want to get on my bike i want to go faster than a walk but not as fast as a but you know, sometimes i want to go for a run i think it's that i think or personally is it's, it's giving time to yourself if you've got a jug and you wake up in the morning and you and, and you're giving i won't and you're just giving to everyone else as soon as you wake up in the morning and you're giving to your kids and you're giving to your spouse and you're giving to the news and you're giving to everyone and then you've got an empty jug you're bitter and twisted by eight o'clock like you're just empty <laughs> totally you know and it's like yeah. you can't and a lot of people sadly then they rock up to work like that and then they go i don't love my job my job i'm like but really like if you could just have a greater morning routine which is why it's so sacred perhaps you would bring a better version of you to work which means you would perhaps get on better with the uh, mm. staff and be more resilient and be more em em empathetic. And I just think it, it cannot be understated how it, powerful that morning routine is. It's massive, but the difficulty is inertia, right? It, it's getting up momentum. It's actually trusting in the process because we, we get so conditioned by the way we, we feel and mm. we start seeing, we, you know, we only, we only see reality equal to the way we're thinking and feeling, period. Mm. whatever's going on in the internal world is the way we're reading the situations out, out externally 100 percent, right yeah so you, you're constantly having this bias feedback <laughs> and and it's changing all the time in terms of as you grow and develop as a human being yeah it's it's kind of like as i said i think about your reality in three months time i oh. think you find and, and all parents say this you find gears that you never knew existed you find mental emotional and spiritual capacities and for someone that loves this stuff, I, I feel like you'll be in your element when you have a child because you'll realize a love you never knew existed within mm. you and a capacity to live on as on few, on little hours of sleep. Like all of this stuff I think is incredible. But I think that that flexibility, what 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 would concern me, and I know this won't happen to you, is but the parents particularly that go, Oh, I used to have a morning routine. And then I had children. I'm like, no, that's not the time to give it up. That's the time when it's more important than ever. Yeah. You know, that's the time when your kids as a, as a monkey see, monkey do, they want <laughs> parents that value themselves because then you don't want to be bitter and twisted going, oh, well, I'd love to do yoga, but you kids keep me here all day. It's like, no, what example does that set? You know, that's not, that's not the way it is. So I think it's so important to be flexible and committed and, and absolutely committed like you said despite the inertia yeah well now now at the end of the day there's never been a greater time to to i reckon throw in a morning routine try something different start mm. looking at different ways that you can start to be empowered in the morning and try not to check the news first thing in the morning and yeah well i've just added in, in my, my my corona morning routine i've just added in a bunch of 30 day challenges to make into a workout like a 30 day push up challenge a 30 day squat challenge lunge challenge blah 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 so and and no music no rah rah no anything just quiet downstairs in the dark and <laughs> <laughs> just gently move before i go for the walk and i'm going well if it may be locked down i'll go for longer than 30 days or whatever i'm an optimistic guy but um, now's the time, as you just said, to play with it. You know, totally. all bets are off at the moment. You don't have to go into traffic. The people that were commuting for one to three hours a day are loving this time because they feel like they've got all this extra time. And I'm like, good on them. Like, imagine not having that three hour, 15 hours a week in the car that you no longer have to do. I know, mate. I know. I know. You know and I whinge about the, the farmer's market and the line there. You know, you think about uh what people have been able to get out of this in a good way is totally. um it's wonderful totally well let's get into point three 
Point three, choose your media wisely. I think uh, we touched on this in point one, but this is not the time to default to more news. It's not the time to default to more Netflix. It's not the time to default to more trashy mags. This is a time to really think about what you want to consume. So I know a great podcast called the Guy Lawrence Podcast. Um, I, you know, I think it's great time to learn new podcasts, to do you want to learn a language? Do you want to do online programs? I know, Guy, you've got so much free content at mm-hmm. the moment. I think it's a great time to uh, read the books, read the books that you've just never got into, read new books. I was talking to a mutual friend of ours, Bronnie Ware, just earlier today, and she told me about Ken Follett. I said, I've been reading some you know, World War II love stories and Sarah loves all the Outlander series and I'm looking at something just a bit, you know, she's like more historical fiction. I'm like, yeah, she's like, Ken Follett. I'm like, never heard of him, but yeah, sure. Like now's the time to choose what you want to learn. Watch the movies and the docos that will build you up. Inspire you. Inspire you, yeah. yeah like uh, I'm just looking at all the different ranges of books here. Like do do new stuff. Don't go into more of the comfort zone like you don't have to really i mean maybe you've been okay here's the alternate example maybe you've been working 80 hour weeks and you've never watched i don't know what's a series of people maybe you've always wanted to watch go go on go on do you know what i watched the other night that yeah. i always wanted to watch the godfather there you go so that's on netflix <laughs> okay i've never watched it either <laughs> this like, is the amazing. time <laughs> if you've never watched pulp fiction now is the time to watch a movie you've never watched. I would say, because I only watched Schindler's List maybe 18 months ago, if you've never watched Schindler's List, go and watch Schindler's List. Look at the Oscar-winning movies, the epics. Yeah. Go and read. Uh, uh, so so what's his name? Michael Douglas's dad. Kirk Douglas died recently, aged 103, I think he was. He was in, I think it was Citizen Kane. Citizen Kane is largely considered the greatest movie ever. I've never watched it. I still haven't watched it. But I want to. This is the time to go and like consume the epics. I'll be biased and say this is the time to go and read Les Miserables or Victor Hugo's Hunchback of Notre Dame, War and Peace, anything that you never thought you would ever consume. Totally. Um, this is the time. You've yeah. got no excuses. If you can commute three hours a day, bang, you can watch the God. I know, but, right there, but there's, a, there's a trap though, isn't there? Don't you think that like because there's so much so much space in our day that we can actually just start filling it all with like start drinking more wine every night and then all of a sudden one glass becomes three and the next yeah yeah but that's the stuff that you've already been doing not that you have no no. (laughs) (laughs) No, i quit yesterday i feel much better thank you (laughs) i'm like don't default to more of the same exactly this is the time to I'm just looking at random books like, you know, I haven't read, you, you, I'm sure you've read this. I haven't read this for Yonks guy, The Celestine Prophecy. Oh, oh, what a book. I haven't read it for Yonks. And I'm like, I always go, you know those books that you're like, will I read it a second time? But you've got so many books on your book list. You're like, oh, just, and I want to re- read something new, something new, something new. Like this is the time to reread a book mm. because you'll be so busy in six months when the world's back to normal. It, you won't give yourself that opportunity, but this is the time if you wanted to learn French or I don't know any kind of language, like get in there. Yeah, no, it's great. I've been I've been um, trialing like different online class physical classes every day as well because normally I go to do yoga. I go to, used to do weights and like like this morning I jumped on my mate's um, movement surf movement session i always wanted to do one but i could never get up to him in the gold course and he was running one this morning i'm like great i'm gonna try this and try something new and and i found myself like wow that uh, i loved it you that's know? so good i would never have done it yeah that's it yeah. do all the things that you would never normally do and i think particularly online there are so many um online Membership similar to yours guy that are, are giving people trials or even just open access I even saw you know and again. I know there's a commercial element to it Chris Hemsworth's yeah. workout uh, I think it's called center, you know, they're giving Free access for a period of time our mutual friends the merry makers are giving away merry body for a period of time like there's so many people doing great things at this time to give it away and that's just two or three examples there are so many people but i also think like um what other notes was i making here um i feel like there's a couple of things but yeah online on just online courses books movies documentaries but on your terms stuff that you've been wanting to, do. to consume 
you know, because everyone will be offering you their stuff, but it's what do you want? Like, I think meditation is a per isn't this guy the perfect time to go? What excuse do I have to commit to a meditation practice or just to really lean into a meditation practice right now? Totally. There's never look in my. I might be slightly biased, but there's nah. never. <laughs> but there's never been a greater time to learn this work. Mm. But the, the 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 difficulty is sometimes if you're operating from um, you know a place of fear, stress, and anxiety, which you can be in these times because you you're feeding into the consumption and you just perpetuate in a loop. It almost seems like a it, it seems like a further, further, further away, uh, far off, distant concept. Mm. You know what I mean? And it's actually just getting somebody in there to have these experiences. Like we we run um, my good friend Matt Omer ran a sound session last night, and it was. Fucking brilliant. We had 160 online through Living oh, Sport, nice. right? And every turned up, and it was great for me because I could just sit back, support Matt, and just not have to think, speak, do yeah. nothing, and just enjoy this. And it was phenomenal. Like, there were so many people in there that just had this experience for the first time that they could actually embody and be and actually start to get the concept, you know? Mm. And it's just, ah. Uh, and when you're thirsty to learn, it's a wonderful thing. And yes, there'll be speed bumps away yeah. along the way where you realize there's a lot to learn. But you know, if you've got a thirst for anything, now is the time to follow it. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Um, all right. Why don't you go on to, to step number four? Creating circuit breakers. Yeah. Yeah. So again, I'm very mindful of this. I kind of touched on this earlier for, for me. And, and again, we'll come out of this from probably different angles because of, of the our situations in life. But, but, for me, it's very important to check in during the day to see where I'm at with myself. You know, you know, it's funny. I was only thinking about this yesterday about different analogies because I'm always like daydreaming about stories, analogies, and things like yeah. share on the podcast and stuff. And you know, the movie Avatar. Yes, I loved it. Right? I don't know about you. I loved it. I loved yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's great. It's just yeah. amazing. But, I, I, I must watch it again in during the Corona. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another one for the list. Right? Yeah. But I kind of, st I have a relationship with myself, literally like an avatar. So the way I look at it is like I have a body and there's me in it, like an avatar, almost like a driver in a car. Yeah. And, and this body it quite often misbehaves, does things that it's been trained to do over time, over the years. So from the way I've lived my life, that my, you know, circumstances, things, everything's happened is literally been given my body certain information to behave in a certain way. So quite often it does things that I don't agree with up here. <laughs> it's like a divide, right? And most of the time it goes unconscious through the day. And and you you that unconscious patterns, you're thinking, you're feeling, you're fixating, you 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 actually end up fixating on problems and things, and you it just becomes something like this, can become like this, just like I woke up in that anxiety. And I'm so aware of that now. I, I like to rise above it, like rising above the rain clouds and taking a look. What's the weather doing down there? How is it? How's the storm? How's the wind? How's everything happening within my body avatar? Because I have a, I keep, it helps me think about keeping a separation from it that I'm not actually the storm. I'm not actually mm. the fear. You know what I mean? There's another oh, part to totally. it. Absolutely. And of course, I don't know about you, but, Quite often you can feel the anxiety in the fear if depending on who you talk to and what things are going on. I only had yeah. a conversation with someone the other day and and I was like, shit, I could feel it, anxiety coming off. And I was like, yeah. you know, and uh, yeah, that's this whole um I, I don't think we'll get into it too much today, but just that social connection is now is the time to really keep keep a uh what well, not keep tabs on, but to protect your own self. Yes. There's a lot of fear and anxiety around. So, yeah, those conversations. And sometimes you don't know. The people that you don't expect to be in that fear and anxious place are often incredibly fearful and anxious. And you go, whoa, like this conversation spiraling out of control very quickly. Totally, right? And and that's fine. I, I'm, I'm there. But it's funny, you know, when I people tend, because of what I do, people tend to open up in different ways. Right? And download. <laughs> so, yeah. so um, but the point being is that I, I, I've continually – reminding to check myself during the day just to tune in what's the weather station doing right now where mm -hmm. am i and even the practices that i do in the morning i will bring in into the day sometimes but i know we'll touch on movement in a sec is a great circuit breaker right set setting an alarm clock three times a day just you could be in the middle of something you could be fixated and an alarm goes off and it's oh shit let me stop let me come yes. back to the moment 
yes. where am I right now? Is this good or do I actually need to get off my ass yes. and move the body and come back to, to that, you know? And because yes. I have such an entrained practice over the years, it really serves me now and it stops me deviating too far off one way and making something worse than what it actually is. Like uh, chatting to Bill Bennett on the podcast last week, who was making a film on fear. You know, we have perceived fear. So we have imaginary fear, and then we have actually real fear. Mm -hmm. And it's been able to distinguish the, the two and have a very um, kind of level-headed approach to what's actually going on because we can lose that very quickly. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, it'll be interesting, the, the documentaries and movies that come out of the end of this time as well, isn't it? I mean, that is going to be incredibly powerful. But even the conversation we have around it. The circuit breaker one's interesting. I feel, um, like you said, that it's easy once you've got a practice to uh, to have that circuit breaker almost like as a, as a, as a habit. I find sometimes I get, uh, depending on what's happening in the day, but almost get wound up like an energizer bunny. And if I don't have a circuit breaker, which for me is often going for a swim in the ocean. It's I like can't imagine you having too much energy, Marcus. <laughs> you know how, I don't know about you, and some people want to lecture me about this, but if you're writing emails, sometimes I don't breathe when I'm, I'm typing. I'm just madly typing away. And then I go, oh, like, gee whiz, I just went into like a, Oh, you know, and, and you need like, like you said, an alarm or a circuit breaker. So for me, mine is definitely nature. As simple as I live uh, like a, a one minute bike ride from the beach. So just to get on the bike, go down the beach, hop in the water, think about, maybe think about like often if I'm struggling, you know how we said about the afternoon is not, your willpower is not at its peak. Mm. I've got to like chunk things down into literally five minute tasks. And I put an alarm on for like five minutes so that I can just, Keep on track, Marcus. You can do this. <laughs> um, but I think often um, the circuit breaker, like getting on a bike, going down to the beach or going for a walk where there's a lot of trees, sometimes even not taking the phone and just going for a walk and doing the deep breathing. Uh, having recently been in a breathing workshop with you in February and just mm. and being a part of a group of 30 people, like you can't underestimate the power of breath as a circuit breaker whether you do it sitting quietly, whether you go for a walk in nature, however you do it, just it's highly likely that the way you breathe during your work time and then the way you breathe during your circuit breaker time are very different. And so I think however you choose to break the circuit, I think the breath is a key part of that in any case. It's massive. It's massive. And it's one I always turn to. The breath is the first thing you always turn to, I believe. Mm. You know, And yeah. you can condition that breathing in, in such a conscious way. And it just gets you out of the program. It really, it gets you back to being in the conscious mind. Like, you know, you would have heard Bruce Lipton talk about uh, the, the fact that we're running on 90, 95% of the day, all our thoughts, feelings, emotions that we exhibit is coming from the unconscious mind. It's just trained yeah. behavior. Boom, 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 boom. And we've got really fucking good at it. <laughs> just one other thing, which we've got really, really good at. <laughs> I'm so not used to swearing on podcasts. So I'm normally, I, I love hearing you, but I'm not, I'm not sorry that I'm not, uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know what's going on today. I, I rarely swear, to be honest with you. But there's a couple of <laughs> One thing before. that we've become terrible at also is um, eating on the run. So for me, a circuit breaker, a great circuit breaker, particularly with so many kids at home at the moment, is just after this interview, I will go and have lunch with the family if they haven't already eaten it. And that just completely dials down my whole body, particularly if we do a little blessing or a couple of gratitudes before we eat. Um doing some deep breathing, just do it, taking three deep breaths before eating. Naturally, we spoke about earlier going into rest and repair, taking three deep breaths, I find generally way better on digestion, eat more slowly, the, the mouthfuls, are che you know, chewing more, they're great ways just to tone it down um, and break the circuit. Probably. So I think that's a great, whether it's morning tea, lunch, whatever it is, I just think it's a great, great way to just slow the pace down and change it up. And it must be different for you. You must be enjoying the fact that you can have lunch with your family right now. I think social, social eating is way better. They're, they're having a nana out they're there. <laughs> <laughs> social, social eating, maybe they're hungry, they're hangry. I've got a new word, it's called hangromatic. Hangromatic? They're, they're hangry and they're so melodramatic because of their hunger that they just dial it up, um, particularly when I'm recording. <laughs> Apologies, listeners and viewers. Um, 
I did, I did realize we've been talking for 45 minutes. It's incredible, isn't it? Doesn't yeah. podcast fly? Well, let, let's fly into the last three because otherwise I know you and I, uh, being friends, will be here all day. Yeah. We're kind of covering this off, but movement. I think movement is just a great state breaker, great circuit breaker, great for energy, great for feelings of vitality. Um, Guy, you're probably a lot better to talk about this professionally, but I know anecdotally when I move, I'm way better up here in my heart spiritually um, no matter the movement, I think any movement is great, just, just moving in ways that you love. Uh, when I look at a lot of longevity cultures, movement is key, whether it's the gardening, um, jumping in the ocean, going for a walk, yoga, whatever it is. But there's no doubt that movement is a great way to reduce uh, reduce the noise. Totally. And, and I also think as well that there's never been a greater time to explore different things that you wouldn't do because then you can bring in a mental aspect. Uh, you can bring in a breathing aspect to it and actually – start to reconnect and become more consciously aware of what you're doing. That's why I love learning new things. So you're doing yin yoga for the hips for the next 30 days, are you? Right. <laughs> There's probably still a lot. Of, I thought I thought I couldn't release my hips before. If you'd seen me five years ago, you'd be like, how does the guy walk Concrete. in a day? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, look, it's crucial. We all know that. And um, the one thing that I, I would suggest, with movement as well though there's two different things you've got movement but then you've got exercise mm -hmm. and they're two very different things because i i know from um you know from the my old stuff being a pt and stuff like that you'd have people that come in and train three times a week they go hard they push it and then they sit in their ass for eight hours a day they, they live yeah. sedentary lifestyles and the reality is you're better off actually trying to find lots of pockets of movement through the day constantly and then bringing in little bits of stresses here and there from that as well so well, i think you introduced me to the work of dr john hart who was he, his numbers were i think three hours a day of standing now for people that are watching this stand up desk all the way um lots of movement you're able to actually get in as much as you can but mm. i think like you said, you don't want to just exercise for a little bit and uh, be sedentary the rest of the time. But I think that definition is something that a lot of people are still getting used to or, or adjusting to because don't you think we've been indoctrinated in an exercise lifestyle and totally. people have forgotten about, yeah, gardening or even just cleaning the house or yeah. incidental movement. Like um, People are still obsessed with getting close to the supermarket doors and not taking the stairs and still doing the elevators. I'm like, no, we've got to make life... A little bit harder for ourselves not easy like shouldn't we be parking the car in the back corner of the supermarket car park and holding two uneven bags or you know enviro bags people mm -hmm. um you know and making it a little bit tricky rather than making everything so easy physically it's perfect mate i always love the term use stress to heal stress mm. like it's so critical like actually Doing nothing is a stress on the body over time. It's a low sedentary stress and everything starts to atrophy and everything starts to break down. Use it or lose it, literally. So if yeah. we can actually bring in a different, uh, many varying things as possible, that, that just take us past our comfort zone a bit. It doesn't mean we have to go way out here and smash ourselves and do mm. 10,000 reps and all this stuff that you see on YouTube and everything. Yeah. But it's literally about... <laughs> it's literally <laughs> about... You watch on YouTube. <laughs> It's back in my CrossFit days, mate. You know, <laughs> if you watch CrossFit on YouTube, you, do, you assume everyone's an Olympic athlete when they went. Oh, dear. You know? Yeah. But, um, but it's about, it, for me, then, it's about creating as much variety as possible, keep the body working, keep it guessing. And, and from that stimulus, it, it creates a mood and a positivity that's second to none. I know that. One thing, I know we're going to the next point, but uh, we went to Minion Falls the other week for people up uh, in Northern Rivers who mm. will know it. But, Getting into nature whilst we still can, mm. still right? Getting into nature, like and going for a hike, is everything that we're talking about here and everything that you talk about, guy. I feel like it just puts all the pieces of the puzzle together. Particularly if you do it with someone or uh, or others that you love. I know if you're all in the same house, you're allowed to. So if you've got six in your family or you live with Linda, you can go together and you're you're in the confines of the law. But that's a great place, breathing fresh air, breathing moving nature like it's just a massive win-win totally. and you get a lot of perspective yeah uh, when you go in places like that yeah yeah absolutely all right so all right. the penultimate step this is a great one by you rip it up and start again i love it just love it <laughs> tell the listeners and the viewers what you mean by that again every time all right 
I, I'm, I'm aware of the time, but when I look at all the things that are that that um, in my life that have I've moved towards something that has given me so much more purpose, more meaning, more joy, more creativity, more life. Like like literally, I want to get up in the morning and and bring things. It's normally come from a place of stuckness, adversity, difficulty, and like we talked about earlier, this I've had to reach in a little bit deeper and see things or reveal something within me that I didn't know was there and look at it through, through a new set of eyes. Um, I always look and try and bring a beginner's mindset into everything I do now. Is this a beginner's mind? How can I see this for the first time and, and not bring all that stuff in it? So what I'm finding, and that's why we've been able to, to move and adapt, I think, without too much stress that's going on, is to be able to go, okay, Things are moving. The goalposts are changing. My my alignment, my heart, I know is all in this direction. There's the things I want to do, but let's try something new. Let's throw that out. <laughs> it served me. I've learned it. I'll do it. I'll try something new. And if like throw spaghetti on the wall, but we can bring that mentality into the small things, into the exercise, like we spoke about, into our routines. Can we? Can we change it up? Let's rip up the house. Let's renovate. Let's do things. Let's actually create a new energy around whatever it is it been. Has it been stagnant for a long time? Yeah. You know? This is the thing. You can you can tackle this from a a physical material level, like ripping the house. Like, so how many people yeah. are doing renovations right now and decluttering to the max, which I think is great. Like on a physical material level, you might be looking at. We just spoke about with movement, like rip up don't rip your body up but like rip up all your limiting beliefs about i can't do this and i'm too old for that and i'm too fat for this and i'm not strong enough for that rip it all up and literally start again with a beginner's mindset give that curiosity unleash that curiosity and start something again in full force it could be even the bigger deeper meaningful stuff around work and career maybe you are going to rip up the job maybe you've been redundant and you won't go back into the same industry um maybe you literally will start again like this is a time where all bets are off the canvas is as blank as you will allow it to be the more you're willing to challenge your beliefs the more uh space you're prepared to create there's a great line many of you would have heard it before but in order to create the space for something new you've got to remove the clutter you've got to remove something out of your house or your life or your environment in order to create the space for whatever it is that you want to bring in or let in so you know it's an exciting it's an exciting time when you have that belief and it's as i said all bets are off there are no limits uh to that belief except the limits that we that we put on ourselves totally totally i was just seeing so we got a few more comments coming in there it's cool it's just, uh, say, hey Sean. Yeah. hey shane <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking at them. I wasn't sure what to say because I know this is uh, your podcast, but I'm looking at Shane saying love in this. I'm like, oh, it's always great to get some good feedback and Sharon as well and Fleur and Eva. Um, all right, now the last one, this is your this is your baby, which I'm very big on, um, gratitude practice. Gratitude practice. Because and Despite the world at the moment, this is big, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's massive. And again, I can only speak from my own experience. Um, and being in times of adversity and difficulty that have felt like my whole world was caving in and I had nowhere to turn, um, it was a gratitude practice that got me through these things and being able to find that beauty from with what I have to receive. And, you know, having worked with, you know, literally probably thousands of people now and, and helping them to see their own beauty in certain things that they have on a daily basis, it's massive because we condition ourselves to see the world in a different way and for me what a gratitude practice has done and it doesn't have to be much but what it's done is allow me to 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 be my own happiness generator if you like that that i don't look for the external things to try and fulfill something that's already within me so it stops me from leaning into consumerism. It stops me leaning into the things, or oh, if I have that, I can then fulfill a need that there's an emotion that's already within me. And again, it comes down to body awareness and being able to become, have a deeper relationship with your avatar, the, the beast that runs wild by itself, and coming back to that and evoke those emotions and feelings and, and train the body that you all have, you're, it's already there. It's already there and it helps me stay present. 
So I have a practice every day. I, like part of my morning routine is to finish on gratitude and it's to finish in there. And I know that sympathetic and par that fight or flight, rest or repair, it's the heart that actually influences that autonomic nervous system and the homeostasis. So if you can actually bring all your awareness to that place and breathe into that place of your heart, you can continue to stimulate that and then you can create emotions from that place. So as you can imagine, when you get into your day, it's very different as if I just got up from that state of anxiety and just, you know. Yeah, and then you just straight into it and almost gone. on autopilot, like yeah. you said, 90 to 95% just going on autopilot. Mine is definitely not as thorough as yours, uh, great man. But what I would like to talk about on this level mm. is is the importance of gratitude um, the in person, like, like being yeah. grateful when you buy the bread, being grateful when you see your partner in the morning don't just say hi or you know what's for breakfast it's just showing gratitude when um someone makes you a meal when at any point it's uh, i think martin seligman spoke about the the most powerful way to the most the, the biggest power of gratitude is expressing your gratitude like looking into someone's eyes mm. and sharing which is really a lot harder than i do have on my phone a little doc a google doc you know three things i'm grateful for each day that's so easy, you know. Actually, telling oh, keeping a life. journal, writing it down yeah. is it, yeah, yeah. It's good, but it's easy, isn't it? Yes. So I think that's uh, being able to like give someone a the gratitude that's hard is 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 sharing your heart and soul with someone in person and being like deeply emotional. You might even get a bit teary, and it's very <laughs> it's almost might be embarrassing because you're going to lose it. You know, <laughs> but 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 but, it, but it, if it comes from a place that's unconditional, there's no yeah. agenda behind it. It's genuinely I want to connect with the soul right now and 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 have a connection. It only it can be fleeting, it can be yeah. anything. But it's it's that consistency that I I believe helps you see optimism starts to see the world through a different lens, and as you see the world through a different lens, you see a much more opportunity as opposed to obstacles. And you know what I love it. Sorry, mate. Yeah, and then you see a way through. I think um, just even hearing you and I talk about it, we have different. Uh, well, well, we lean into different elements of gratitude. I think the the important part is that there is a holistic nature to gratitude. You, if you just sit in the morning and think about gratitude, but then you're not grateful in your daily life. And guy, you and I have spoken about this about you know people that meditate and they still behave like tools throughout the day. It's like, well, you know, that's not really quite holistic. I think. You know, it's wise to write your gratitude down or pen and paper. You know, that's important because if you can't do that and you just fob that off, then then you need to develop the small muscles, the medium muscles and the big muscles. You want to be able to do as Guy's doing and be able to sit down and literally bring it all in and be grateful for your arms and your legs and your eyes and your ears and your hair and the fact that you've got 32 teeth or however many. Maybe you don't have that many, but the fact that you've got a belly button because it used to feed you in, when you're in the womb and, you know, then we might be living in Corona world, but gosh, we've got this incredible body, this wild stallion as guys calling it or whatever <laughs> you know it earlier. Um, we've got so much to be grateful for, but we don't want to end it there. We, we, we then want to express that gratitude to people that we come into contact with and don't fake it. No one likes fake gratitude. The thing is we can see it right through people as well. We're all smart enough to know when it's not authentic, but you want to be able to incorporate it so that it is a, it is a holistic gratitude rather than a tactical or a, a technical gratitude so to speak. And we're getting some great comments in here, Legend. Great discussion. Gee, I've, I've, oh, Marcus, your energy is electric. Thank you, Robert. I used to have a nickname called Electric. Did you? you know, <laughs> uh, I used to wear blue contact lenses in, in my, over my brown eyes and I was very materialistic and what's the word, metro in my early days. And uh, and and a, a radio colleague of mine, those in Melbourne that, that may love football, Gary Lyon, he gave me the term electric, electric blue. So thank you, Robert. That's very, very kind of you. Doesn't that uh, doesn't surprise me at all, mate? Doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, you go on. No, you fire, fire away. I was going to say we've kind of fired off those seven. Be aware of the way the media works. Powerful morning routine. Choose your media wisely. Have a circuit breaker. The power of movement. Rip it up and start again. I love. I love that. Gratitude practice. We've kind of covered off so many things, but I think we mentioned it at the beginning. I'd love to know because I know you and I talk about it off air a lot. Like. Can you just be clear, uh, and I know this is your podcast, so a lot of people probably already know, but maybe just for the people when I share this as well, all the stuff that you've got going on um, that people can can access to because I, I, hopefully after this chat, 
people are going to be wanting a lot more of um of what you share yeah no absolutely so right now i have been working ferociously alongside matt omo and petra brozovic who i facilitate the retreats with and we've literally put a, a, a global online free event that's happening right now all the way through april and uh, if people want to join us like i said we had 160 turn up last night we had 300 turn up on petra's meditation the other day uh, it's been phenomenal um so it, if they come back to live in flow dot co and uh oh. they'll be able to find the uh, the registration link from there if they want to come and join us and uh, learn a little bit more about this work absolutely and you legend because you've obviously had to make some adjust adjustments at the moment <laughs> along with <laughs> yeah, everyone else uh, live events that we had to yeah post on yeah so we had three three events like a, a mini road show um, called the Wellness Base Camp in Geelong, Camden, just south of Sydney, and in Canberra, which was due for May the 2nd. Um, so essentially for all of those attendees, but now as one of the benefits of, of this World Without Borders, we've turned that event into an online event, which is actually happening this Saturday called oh, wow. Crisis to Confidence. We've put all of the speakers uh, from the Wellness Base Camp together into this live event. It's funny, you look at the speakers and everyone fits their own niche. We've got Kim Morrison talking about certainty and love she does a lot in the four personalities like the peaceful the playful the precise and the powerful and you know you might live in a house where you might be a powerful but then you live with a peaceful and you're spending all of this time with them and <laughs> it might be like a war so you know how do you navigate that during this isolation time so she'll be talking about love and how do you I'm, I'm so grateful i met kim for the first time obviously at your event a few weeks yes. back and uh, she's just a legend yeah. yeah, and for those that love cricket, she is the wife of the great New Zealander, Danny Morrison. Um, now, and then uh, uh, Jason Witten, who has positive real estate and he's a great financial mentor who I've known, met him at a Tony Robbins event back in 2006. Um, he's talking about how to create financial security in these uncertain times. And so naturally with, I think it's about 30% of the population mm. are either without jobs or on a massively reduced income right now. Uh, I think everyone's relationship with money will forever change, hopefully, based uh, as a result of this event, so uh, as a result of the, the corona. So I think um, that's going to be a really important conversation. Um, I'll be talking about community, uh, but I also want to talk about career clarity because I feel like it's a really important time to have clarity on either are you going to go back to what you've been doing or is it now time to look at something new? Um, Brett Hill, my Wellness Couch teammate, talking about mental and emotional and physical resilience during this time. And then Cindy O'Meara from Changing Habits, she's going to come in and talk about how to create impeccable immunity. That is obviously a hot topic at this time for people of all ages, but even just, and I don't know about you guys, but isn't it interesting now, health and wellness and immunity is not going to be this buzz term, this luxury lifestyle that we all do. People are going to be like, right, immunity is important, you know. So Cindy will be talking about, you know, things like creating a home yeah. garden, uh, like seedlings are selling like no, no one's business, which is great. Talking about just immune boosting um, whole foods and, and, and the basics of immunity. So they're the five topics in this crisis to confidence one day. Uh, um, it's $49 and it's all at thewellnessbasecamp.com. So thewellnessbasecamp.com, crisis to confidence. It's on this Saturday, but it will be like, lifetime access for people if they can't see it on saturday um, amazing they'll be able to access it forever so 49 bucks i think it's, it goes for eight hours so it's not free but it is about five bucks an hour i think yeah um oh. for people that come along that sounds incredible it's it's what it's what's needed right now mate that's the most mm. important thing you know yeah so i think you know for, for people like you and i it's, it's easy for us to say but i think our message is at the moment are now more important than what they've ever been um and this is the time you know you and i've had conversations with this i put a lot of my eggs in the live event basket because i'm a raging extrovert i love real life human connection but this time has really taught me the power of digital engagement the power mm. of relationship building in the online space and i'm thoroughly enjoying it it's you know awesome. i was so grateful when you called the other day going do you want to do a live together? I'm like, yes, like anything for a bit of human connection, please. <laughs> so, you know, love it. So I really appreciate the invitation and um, I'm definitely going to return it. You're going to come on your exceptional life if you if you partake, if you accept my invitation and we'll talk about all manner of things because we really, let's be honest, we've only just begun. We can only talk about the this. I know, I know, mate. I know. Mate, yeah. look, well, thank you so much for coming on and uh, that was incredible 
it's uh, it's always a pleasure talking to you, mate. Every time I leave, I feel ten feet taller than where before I sat down after chatting to you, mate. So uh, the feelings are mutual. You're very calming for me, guy. I just <laughs> I could listen to you. Uh, we had uh, someone at our recent event where you came and were in the flesh. Someone was just what's the word like? Not fan gazing or star. No, I don't want to say. Oh, no, I'm not going to swear. Not star f bombing as we used to call in TV land. But she was so she was fan girling. She was fangirling, that's it. She's like, it's Guy Lawrence. It's Guy Lawrence. And and just to paint the picture for people, Guy did a meditation in a dark room at 5 o'clock in the morning and the attendees didn't know um, who, like we surprised them. We didn't say who the who the facilitator was and then she heard your voice and she almost melted and I was like, <laughs> I love it. So you're a bit like that for me too. I hear you talk and I'm like, ah, it's very calming. So thanks for what you do, uh, mate. Love cool. what you do. Thanks, legend. We'll uh, catch you soon. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone, on Facebook Live. Thanks for coming. Thank you. See you. Oh, Robin. Hey, Robin.